Oh, we're live. <laughs> okay. Um, well, since we were here last, I've interrupted that with some trees that are in the foreground. And I've decided that I'm going to take some of that form and bring it around here to kind of feed the viewer into the subject matter, which is going to be in this area here. I was wondering if it's if the light is behaving. Can you see closing on that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I, I'm just showing you a detail because I've added a lot of texture and a lot of different colours in there, and that usually helps me work on sculpting the painting when there's a lot of texture to work against. Now I haven't done much in the way of sculpting on this so far but it's it's busy enough in a way that I might just leave it. But getting a texture both on the canvas and in the painting is very critical. You, you need feedback. I need feedback and that's what helps give me that feedback. <clears throat> The trees are just roughed in at the moment um, and I've been told that um, I should do th the big things in front of the camera rather than all the little incy wincy details. So when I put the form in here I'll do that next time and I'll do it in front of the camera. So you'll see it all including mistakes because there inevitably will be some. So it's looking wintry at the moment, but I haven't really decided that this is snow. This could be just the colour of the night. Um, and so I'm going to soften the black with a very, very dark blue like here and soften the tops because it does look like snow at the moment. And that's really an overhead light. Putting those water bottles. Oh, you, you're controlling me. Okay. <laughs> it's the trees work just roughed in, but it always helps the eye to get small details as well as the rough shape. So I do like adding in the twigs and the small branches because they do make. Should I zoom in on this bit? Um, well, maybe if you people wish. can see it. Yeah. Um, any stories or thoughts on Asia's Astra cover? Any stories or thoughts? Mm. Is that a question? Yes, yeah, sorry, oh, okay. I missed the name of the person who asked that question. Well, interesting. A few hours ago, um, we were talking to a friend in California about making a, a sculpture of that. So that was interesting. Wait, am I talking about the same one? Astra? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite a challenge. I, I quite fancied at one point making it so it was articulated in full size, but a distraction. <laughs> Good fun, but a, a distraction. Um, it was interesting because there were lots of robots around when I was doing that that were chrome and looked highly polished and highly finished. And I quite like the idea of Astra looking like cast iron and steam. A sort of um, late Victorian robot, if you like. I'm going to close up in on you doing one of the branches. I won't be going in and out a lot, but just while you do, can you do a couple of branches while I'm here? Yeah, yeah. The silhouette of the tree, this, this particular tree, um, is actually a portrait of a tree. The, these twigs and things 
I'm doing really though from memory and from a memory of a texture more than a memory of individual uh, twigs. So it's... Could you do a new twig rather than going over the same twig? <laughs> I will do that. Brilliant. I remember you telling me once that to get twigs and branches looking realistic you have to keep the thickness even on both sides all the way through. If they get thicker and thinner and thicker and thinner, they immediately look unrealistic. So yes. you have to keep the thickness uniform. Or in, if I'm starting, really, ideally, I should start at the root and work towards the tip. And that way they can naturally become thinner. <coughs> For me, working f across this branch, it's harder, but they're all that way round. I could I could tip the painting upside down and do it more effectively, but you're right. And I would check and fix that later in the normal course of events. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go back now and hopefully we can still see... So that was something I was going to say before, was that I'm looking at this on a little <coughs> screen, um, but I don't know how you guys are all watching this, so um, it would be good for me to know, um, are you on computers, are you on phones, can you, can you see everything, is it all a little bit small? Um, I think it was, Cathy asked, um, are you influenced by Maxfield Parish at all? Um, Max, Maxfield Parrish was a painter I, I discovered, oh, I suppose in the mid-70s, so not really time to be influenced, but I, I do like his work, and I've seen some of the originals. I, I'm particularly impressed by his litho drawings. So, yeah, more of an inspiration than, a, than an influence but um yeah the point about it is yeah is good so people are liking the zooms i'm i um i noticed it's not great if i keep doing it constantly but if dad's working on something a bit different i'll go in again um I so don't. we're not sort of going in and out all the time <laughs> i don't expect i'll be doing much different to I mean, it's what I'm doing now might take an hour or two to do. So I could move around and do work on another area, actually. But yeah, it's yeah, paint. There's a lot of d detail work in painting. I don't normally work in de in terms of very fine detail, but it, I think with things like trees, it helps. It helps to do some of that yeah I work on something a bit bigger so we can see how that might shape up um, someone asked if you uh, by the way thank you all for letting me know how it's looking on your devices um, we had another question. Uh, did you know Patrick Woodruff well, and what did you think of his work? You could answer that. Not on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew him well, yes. Liked him too, and I was amazed at how phenomenally detailed, how obsessive he, he was about detail, and very competent at doing it. I never worked that way, but I was very impressed with how he did. He studied German, by the way, at university. He didn't go to art school. I just remember, I think I had digestive biscuits for the first time in my life at his house. And right. forever on, they were called Patrick's Biscuits. <laughs> they were. 
<clears throat> I was very young, by the way. I was about four or five. It wasn't. It wasn't recent. <laughs> <laughs> he um. <clears throat> He was incredibly obsessive about labeling everything and he just had a fantastic way of doing things. He didn't like killing creatures, and, but, but he had um, a lot of snails eating his plants and he had a bucket with a wooden lid and he did an oil painting on the lid of snails and he would catch the snails, put them in the bucket and take them out to the country and release them. So it was, it was fascinating that not only would he do that, but he had this beautiful painted bucket within which he did it. So who asked the question? Were they, were they a fan of Patrick's work? Um, I don't know, maybe, um, sorry again, I missed the name. Um, the person who asked after Patrick, if you could let us know your name and if you are a fan of his or how you know of him. Uh, we had another question from Tony, which was, is Caspar David Friedrich an influence? The, again, the answer's the same. It's, um, <coughs> I never knew about Caspar David Friedrich in time for him to be of influence. By the time I came across him, I pretty much, down a lot of my key pieces, I am a big admirer of Caspar David Friedrich. Um, I love the mountains. It, yeah, I like his work. Um, Alan asks, did you like the artist Avind Earl? Who? Avind Earl. Oh, gosh, yes. He worked for Disney. Yes, I did. Very stylized, but yeah, very impressive. If I've got the right person, that is. Sometimes I worry about asking questions with names of people I don't know in case I betray a terrible ignorance. <laughs> but I've never heard of that person. I hope that's how you pronounce it. What would you say? My terrible ignorance? Okay, or here's another one. Matty Clairvine. Matty Clairvine. Yeah, I mean, he, he was very famous for uh, Santana Abraxas cover. Album okay. cover. And he painted a, a sort of sanctuary, and I, I wish I'd seen it, but I never did. I'm, my understanding is that there might be an exhibition of his work in the next few years, so I'll look out for that. What are your thoughts on Art Nouveau, the Art Nouveau movement? Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, it was, for me, it was brilliant. I loved the arts and crafts movement. I, I loved that. And I loved the Art Nouveau as it came out of that. I thought, I'm sad it was so short-lived. I'm more sad that the modern movement, which had very little to offer, was so long-lived. In fact, you know, the professions haven't got over it yet. <laughs> one of the things that if you look at a lot of say Japanese painting for example you can admire the craftsmanship but the thing that is stunning as an overall thing looking at Japanese painting is the incredible design it's beautifully exquisitely designed as well as very competently painted. So that combination of design of the painting and the painting was very impressive. And Art Nouveau picked up on a lot of that. I mean, they made their own thing, but that was a very significant Japanese influence. And the way they designed not just painting, but 
everything from jewelry onwards. It didn't look particularly Japanese, but it was a Jap Japanese art was a big influence. Hang on, let that dry before I do anything more with that. I'm just trying to lessen the impact of the black. Could you stand in the shot a little bit more while you're doing that? All I was doing was washing a brush. Well, we want to see it all, the <laughs> whole process. The whole process. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, someone asked when you talked about uh, sculpting earlier. Um, oh, flip, I missed the last part of that question. Um, could you explain that a little bit more? Yes, I mean, basically what's happening is that this is a silhouette, but it also has a form. And <clears throat> because it isn't something you would immediately recognise, I need to put as much definition of the form of this thing as I can. So because I'm making it look three dimensional, I use the word sculpting metaphorically in that context. I think it'll look more like a night sky when there's stars and things in there. At the moment, it does look black, but there isn't any black in the sky. <coughs> there isn't the trees there. Why do your <coughs> rocks float? What's that about? I'm paraphrasing everybody's questions, by the way, because, <laughs> because I don't have time to write them down. Okay. They, they generally put them better than I say them, but that's the gist. Yeah, seemed like a good idea. <coughs> It's like, I don't know, if this was calligraphy it would be like quotation marks. It adds a kind of emphasis to the form, which I like, without having to address the issue of how and why they're there. It can just, it sort of brings an attention to this form. These kind of emphasize the shapes of the other rock. So I, I, I use it as a visual punctuation, but I like it. It's, yeah. Do you need some thinking time or? No. <laughs> um, John asks, and actually a few people have asked, um, do you wish that you'd done all of the yes covers? <clears throat> well, I <clears throat> I didn't know them until I started on Fragile. So there were three that there wasn't any prospect of me doing because I didn't know them. But yeah, for coherence, I would have. I would have. Yeah. Dave wanted to know, will you be doing any furniture? Well, that is a plan, actually, yes. I, if we build this very foul village up north, which I'm hoping is going to happen, if we build the, um, the gallery and the accommodation that goes with it I'd like to not just do the architecture but do everything the furniture the fabrics not on my own but with people like this bossy person sitting there <laughs> <coughs> wherever that is I had a great idea for that which would be I really like the sea urchin chair but I think we should do loads more shapes and colours and sizes and fill rooms so it's like being in the coral reef. And you can climb up things and into things, but everything caves into your shape. There you go. Like um, Team Lab. 
I'm going to have to take you there if you come to Japan. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, I would like that. Um, lots of people wanting to know your opinions on Gaudi. Oh, I love his work. He was extraordinarily lucky. He had a um, a patron who pretty much gave him his head, and he built all kinds of fabulous buildings because he had a patron. Um, it's easy, you know. I can sit here and paint, even if I didn't have a client. I can just paint. <clears throat> but if I'm going to build buildings. It's not really something I can do without a client, without a patron. So, yeah, Gaudi's work is fabulous. So what you're saying is if you had the money he had, well, then we'd The patron, see. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were a couple of times when we nearly got there, but um, it, it wasn't to be at the time. Hopefully it will be in the near future. Yeah. You know, coronavirus has set a lot of things back but not necessarily ended them just postponed them so when do you do the stars is that a kind of final touch thing or yeah pretty much yeah just trying to think of ideas to give you while you're <laughs> <laughs> well, I would... pushering around yeah Uh, it was a technical illustrator who asked about Patrick Woodruff. I keep missing the end of their comment. Um, technical illustrator. The t for the technical illustrator, did you did you study at Lancaster technical illustration? Just out of curiosity, because there was a technical illustration course opposite my scientific illustration course. And I missed your name, so I'm wondering if you're one of mine. Maybe not. <laughs> Uh, what's your inspiration for the typography? That that I can answer. The um, when I was at college, I got very frustrated with the incredibly austere design practices that we were expected to follow, particularly for arch architecture. There was no evidence at all that architecture worked for people. By the way, we're going to do a session on architecture after this is finished. So I can show you slides and we can talk more about it. But I was very lucky in that David Pye, the Royal College of Art, let me study basically the psychology of architecture. What kind of spaces made people feel good? So I put a lot of effort into that and it allowed me to pretty much wholesale reject the modern movement in architecture. And with things like the sea urchin chair, I had moved a long way away from, again, the modern movement in furniture design. But when I got the first job at Ronnie Scott's, I pretty much followed what was going on in graphic design. I used Helvetica and basically pretty standard graphic design principles. And it was... No, it didn't work for me. And then I saw Rick Griffin's album cover, Aoxa Moxa, and that was a fantastic liberation for me. It was like, wow, I can actually do whatever I want. So I studied typography then, at that point, and I th read up on what makes it work and what doesn't work, and how much of a letter form you need and found you only need to read the top third and you can read it very well so if you're going to play with the shape you play with the bottom two thirds and it was good it, it, I would you know say Rick Griffin opened the door for me to play basically with typography and it's been enormous fun I, I have never been but I've been invited to three or four uh, graffiti conferences <laughs> one day I'll go Butch says an autobiography of Roger would be great 
We've talked about it before, haven't we? Yeah. And I thought these are great actually because lots of you guys ask questions that um, I wouldn't think or know to ask. So at least on these videos, we've got lots of records of stories and I think this, this is sort of a bit of a log, isn't it? Well, we've got three ways of looking at books. Views, Magnetic Storm and Dragon's Dream were pretty much a catalogue of work done to date. Um, and the fourth book is going to be exactly like that. But we've been talking about doing a book on the creative process, which I think is going to be a very important thing. Um, and we've also talked about a biography, which, to be honest, I'm not so interested in. Um, it's a problem for me. I think there'd be no point doing it if you didn't tell the truth. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to talk about a lot of things, so <laughs> it's a problem. I, I have a little mischief maker there. You'll probably do it. I don't want to know. Ah, good, good. Best answer you could give. I think that I think there's. I don't know. Maybe people have done it really well, but I just think there's a serious conflict of interest doing your parents' biographies. I mean, you what? know. I didn't necessarily mean you doing it, but you badgering. Oh, yeah. right. Well, what can I do? I can't even make you work on this. <laughs> <laughs> no one can see, but every now and again, I do gesture at Dad to keep working, and he completely ignores me. Oh, yeah. So I am trying, just so you all know. Well, you can keep asking me questions. I don't know if I can. Ah, oh, try. Okay. Would you ever want to design a vehicle? Trilby? Trilby asks. I did. When I was at the Royal College, we had a project which was, we were given a chassis and asked us if we would be interested in designing a vehicle on the chassis. And I think there's a picture of what I did in the book Views, plus some other vehicle ideas that I did at the time. There's only so much I can do, and I guess really where I want to put all my focus and effort is a cohesive approach to architecture. And I think if that goes well, that will take up a lot of my time. Alan asks, stand versus sitting. What? Stand versus sitting. I guess for working, what's better, standing or sitting? Oh, I see, I see. I, I guess. Okay, ideally for me, standing. I, I, I like to be walking around while I'm painting. <laughs> So, yeah, I would always stand. What I'm not doing now, because I've set this up for the camera, is I've got it set in one position. And although I've rotated it, and I have put it on its side once, ideally I would be raising it up and lowering it down all the time. So when I'm working down here, that's not as comfortable as working here. And to work here, I would raise the canvas. So standing, but I need to keep the canvas on the move, and I haven't been doing that. So I, yeah, if I'm working in my sketchbook, I take them with me if I go to a restaurant or sitting on a plane or whatever. So my sketchbooks, I work on anywhere. And typically for those I'm sitting. Um, Brian said, made a comment about doing something with Team Lab, and there was a sort of whiff of something like that going to happen, wasn't there? A friend of mine knew some of the people there, and we passed some things, and and then oh, I don't know, these things happen or don't happen. 
but I really think we should do our own thing. Yeah, I and would rather do my own thing. But I think that's a really wonderful way that art is going, the sort of immersive, experiential thing that doesn't cost a fortune to be part of and that's fun and that kids can do with you. I didn't take you, we'll have to go, but one of the things that Mum really loved about it particularly was that there are families there and it's really overwhelming and amazing and impressive but there are also kids enjoying it with their parents and I don't see why that's not a bigger part of art generally. Yeah. I think we should do something like that. Well, we designed um, a, a touring exhibition which included a big immersive park and that was a shame that never happened and I'm assuming for various reasons that isn't going to happen. Um, we had a client for that and although I still know and speak to him he had people fronting up the project for him that he's no longer working with so I, I don't really know where that stands but it was interesting while it lasted Where are most of your originals? Museums, private collections, do you still have them? Ben asks They're all over the place um, they're in storage in three places in America and two places in England and there are very few here so yeah in storage all over the place that's why I would like to build my own gallery so I could keep them in one place I did say last time that um, I mentioned that uh, I did an exhibition in the Isle of Man. I may have not mentioned the location, but it was in the Isle of Man. And it was fabulous because I was there and going in early every day when there was no one else around, I just loved being in the presence of so many paintings. It was a retrospective, so there was quite a lot of them there. And that worked really well for me. I loved that. And actually, I remember sitting down passing the point when the public came in and I was sitting next to a, a very elderly couple who walked in. They were used to going to the museum but they didn't know what was on, they just came on a regular basis and they started walking around and talking about the paintings and sat down. <laughs> I suppose it was a bit sneaky overhearing what they were saying but they were very nice about the paintings. They had no idea where it had come from and it was good. But what I loved was about being there with the paintings myself. And what I liked about the exhibition in the Isle of Man is they asked me what colour I would like the paintings to be seen against. You know, white, black, whatever. And they painted the gallery and the, and the um, partitions to suit the pictures. And that was brilliant. It was really brilliant. So that's what I want to do. So from all the different storage places, I'm going to round them up and get them a home. That is the plan. You can ask me questions now. Are you done? No. With the painting? <laughs> I might just do a bit, just have to be little, awkward. Have a little relax. Okay, let's have some questions. Are there any colours you don't use because of your preference or the reproduction? How they come out in reproduction? Um, not now, no. I use a whole spectrum. Uh, sometimes I'll do a painting that's entirely done with transparent paints, transparent pigments. Sometimes it'll be all done in opaque, but usually it's a mix. Um, I did discover though, when I did my first album cover, which was Race with the Devil, that the reproduction photography couldn't get every colour equally so some colours just dropped out others it picked up very well um, and even identical colours if they were in different mediums weren't picked up equally so it wasn't just colour but it was also the medium that wasn't photographed well 
Now, if I get these scanned, they will be incredibly accurate compared to the 60s and 70s, where it was very, very random. I learned by the hard way some colours simply don't work. For example, I've probably said this a dozen times, but back in the day, the reproduction process could only reproduce about 40% of blues, so 60% of blues you couldn't get. But the, the comparative process, it was harder to tell that blue, blues were a struggle, but you knew. You know, women see more blues than men do. They're lucky then. Mm. Well, we've got to have something. <laughs> I didn't it's know. It's only that. fair. I did know, though, that um, the process blue that was used in three colour printing or four colour printing in Japan, the process blue or the sort of core blue, cyan, is different in Japan to the West. Um, not obvious in the reproduction, but it nev nevertheless was different. I want to close in on what you've been working on so we can legitimately call this a live painting <laughs> video all right yeah the trees oh are you're too close i don't want to go a bit further back is that giving too much away oh you can give as much away as you like you were very naughty i told you to get stuff ready to paint today and you've only done those little <laughs> those little bits there well, I couldn't resist. I <laughs> I started painting earlier and I, I just painted all this area and back here and did the trees. So they're all since last time. But now I'm live. I'm just down to the finicky detail. <laughs> Next time we'll do a big lump of rock in the sky. Cool. Is that the questions that flicker across the screen? What? On the screen. Yeah, can you see? Did no, you see? I, I just saw them going by. I thought, God, I'd never catch those. Well, I, I would say 90% of them I miss. Okay. Um, how do you deal with your many imitators? I missed the name on that, sorry. Well, it's difficult. I'm not happy about it. Um, I was outraged with the degree and the scale of the copying that was done by Avatar, but other artists doing it bothers me much less, but I don't think they should do it. Well, they shouldn't do it and pass it off as their own. Um, I did say that when we were at art school, a big part of training is to copy the old masters. And I'm not describing myself as an old master, but it's a question really. Um, we talked about Patrick earlier and in one of his books he did say that um, he'd done a couple of pieces that were based on mine and he did say I should treat it as uh, a compliment. But because he acknowledged it I found it very hard not to be well to be anything but perfectly happy about it because he acknowledged it. It's when it's not acknowledged that it becomes more problematic. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it before and I would really like to do something to just sort of show that catalogue and we have to get advice about whether that would be possible. But I do think, just for the sake of <laughs> fairness, <laughs> showing, showing the extent where the comparative images I don't know, I'm, I'm being very careful what I say, but... Are you talking about the Avatar film? Mm. Well, I think we are entitled to publish it because it was part of our court evidence. The fact that the judge ruled it out, that was... It was definitely evidence, so... Hmm. Well, you know... We'll see. <laughs> it we'll looked see. great. <laughs> The, the, <laughs> the amount they copied was astonishing. It, it was, yeah. Mm. <laughs> should, should we uh, should we carry on with yeah, a different? Yeah, yeah. Change the subject. <laughs> move on. Um, 
Oh, someone wanted to know uh, what the cost would be of setting up your own gallery. Oh, well. Let's put it out there and see what comes, <laughs> comes back. I Peter, showed the design. Peter Dunkley says if he wins the lottery, he'll help us set up there. <laughs> it's well, very nice. Well, we hope you win. It's, <laughs> I need to find the land and... I would say if we built a place, it would need to be big enough and it would probably be sensible to build a restaurant in it and an exhibition space for other artists. So I, the project I looked at, which I showed the other day, which I don't have at my fingertips right now, but that project would have cost about £7 million, about 10 or $11 million. So good luck, Peter. And that was including buying the land. That's going to have to be the Euro millions, isn't it? That kind of, <laughs> that kind of level. Well, you know, it made sense as a business plan. It looked like it would be self-financing, so. Hmm. Indiegogo, we'll, we'll think of something. Come on, ask me questions. <laughs> Kaya wants to know, do you ever use sponges while you're sponges? working? Sponges? Mm. Um... I did. I did, yes. So is that enough of an answer to that question? <coughs> I passed tense because, um, well, no, they're in the drawer right there where I work. It's when I put the um, texture on with a roller, that's a similar way, but it's more even. Um, but I did, I've done paintings. I'm trying to think of some with small bits of sponges. So yes, I have. And cloths, and paintbrushes, all kinds of stuff. Oh, everyone's saying they'll chip in. Go on then. That would be so nice. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> um, so Chengis asked, do you ever paint your dreams? Do I ever paint my dreams? Mm. Um, Funnily enough, I would say not. <clears throat> but my dreams do provoke me to think of things that I do paint. Um, the nearest to painting a dream that I can recall, and I can't recall the dream at all, but I do remember at the time saying it was based on a dream, was um, the foreground of Pathways. Uh, I'll often have a dream, wake up, remember the dream and think, oh, that was a bit lunatic. What about if it was like this? And then I get, I suppose it triggers ideas rather than produces ideas. Everyone's saying, go fund me, go fund me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another question. Come on. Um... Oh, I did have one. You've got pages of them. I know, but I've asked all of them. Um, someone said, please, hey lady, please ask my question. <laughs> um, I can't get to all of them. I keep missing them. But you are more likely to have it read if you stick it in every now and again. And the chances are better that I'll see it. If it's shorter too. Yes, if it's like one sentence with a question mark at the end, that's ideal. Uh, Frida, Freya, my name's Freya. Um, I will read your question if I see it. I promise. Um, should we talk about what we're going to do at the end of the month? Yeah. Briefly. Okay, well, we've been asked, Freya and I have been asked to work on a joint project for her company in Tokyo. So it's going to be partly in Japanese at least. But we're going to work together on something and she has suggested a strange creature so we're going to work on a creature not a painting but a model or a cutout and it's going to be on the 30th is it no it's this month isn't it it's 30th yeah um i think we'll we'll post the time but for now if you guys want to see us work on this 
Dad says partly Japanese. I'm going to tr be trying to use Japanese when I remember, but I do often forget if not prompted. But we will mention it again. But if you keep an eye out on this Facebook page, sorry, that's very crudely done, but it <laughs> says Courtyard Hero. And that's my company's Facebook page. And at the end of the month, Dad and I are going to be doing this collaboration, um, very much like this, a live working, chatting. Very much unlike this, because Freya is going to be this side of the camera. So better, <laughs> even better than this. <laughs> also, the more people come and watch, the more points I score with my company. So I will be eternally grateful if you we'll, <laughs> come and join we'll put us. The, the, we'll put the... the, the um, the Facebook site up on my Facebook site in the coming week. Brilliant, brilliant. Should we do? Oh gosh, we're over. And I one last question. Took now. all that time. Um, okay. I'm just waiting for a little question. That's a comment. Um, do you paint to music or do you prefer silence? Oh, I've answered this question every day. Um, mm. I don't really paint to music and I prefer audiobooks, not silence. Although sometimes I work in silence because I can't be bothered to change the disc or whatever. But no, normally I'm, I listen intently because it helps me paint. The more distracting and more engaging the story, the freer my mind, the freer I paint. Uh, put it on the page, page please so we can watch it please um yeah so when dad and i do the collaborative thing we'll tell you beforehand the time um but also we'll share it across onto the page after it's done so even if you can't join us live uh we'll share it on dad's page yeah. as well did you sell close to the edge have you sold the close to the edge painting technically no but i don't have it but i repainted it um it got damaged and i've repainted it A couple of times actually. There's a print out there which is based on the new painting uh, but there's two new paintings. We are we were going to do a project for the 50th anniversary of Close to the Edge which would include a whole bunch of new paintings. That may happen. I'll have to talk to Martin Darwell. Martin if you're watching <laughs> let's talk about it. Um, okay, as always, there have been way more questions than I could get to, um, and really good ones. I'm sorry I've missed a lot of them. Glad we got to some of them. Um, so <laughs> there's someone who keeps calling me Frida and saying I'm not reading out their comments. All you're saying is that I'm not reading out your comments. Don't test me right now. We're, we're wrapping up. <laughs> If you put them in next time, I will try and get um, to your comments and questions. So as usual, well, the last one this week is going to be on Friday at 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, but always Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 p.m. Um, and, and next time, so as I don't get into trouble with Freya, I'm going to paint large bits on the painting. I just think that's what we're all here for, isn't it? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not maybe not okay um so yeah come back ask your questions again and more and i will get to as many of them as possible um thank you very much for all of the ones that you have put in and for joining us though i think the safest bet to get a question asked is have the question very succinctly at the beginning and any comments about asking it or whatever should come after name everything after that question because mm. they scroll on the screen it's not always easy to get them no maybe we and should. impossible for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but thank you all very very much thank you very much indeed and we'll see you hopefully on friday yes yes <laughs>